Hey guys, welcome to the new episode of Be Cool's Inbox, where we provide some answer to questions that you actually ask us through the support. I am Marco, and here to help me today, I have Jimmy from support. Always good to be back. Thank you, Jimmy, to come here and help me with, uh, with the task. So uh, we're going to pick some questions from this jar and, uh, and try to reply and as, as much as we can. So, Jimmy, I'm going to give you the honor of picking the first question. Lovely. Let's just get right into it. The very first question asked by Jeremy about repricing central. Jeremy asks, the inventory lab integration that imports buying costs is really useful. But what happens if I have purchased a product at several different costs? Which one will be used? Yeah, that's a very good question. So our inventory lab integration is, uh, is very advanced and is the only one on the market that is uh, providing some additional features. First of all, we sync your cost twice a day instead of just once. So every 12 hours. That's true. Uh, but most importantly, we give you uh, the option to choose between three types of costs. So uh, as Jeremy said, if you have different uh, purchasing costs for the same item, you can actually choose uh, between using the highest cost that you purchased, uh, the average of all the costs that you, that you purchased for, and the current cost. What is the current cost, Jimmy? So the current cost is the latest cost per purchase for your items. So in your inventory lab account, it is the quantity in the top position in the sort sequence. Okay, yeah, that's true. Uh, so you have the flexibility to choose which one to use. Uh, this is very good. All right, uh, let's get to the next question. I'm mm -hmm. gonna pick this one this yeah, time. Yeah, let's go. Let's get into it. So the question is from Nicholas and it's about repricing central. I noticed on managed listings that a couple of ASINs were priced below my main price. How is that possible? It's important for me to keep the profit and not sell for a loss. Yeah, Nicholas, it's very important. Yeah, uh, we don't want to go below main price. So uh, first of all, be, be cool. We'll never proactively reprice you below your main. Uh, that's why we have a main price. Uh, but th there could be sometimes instances where the managed listings page is showing values that, that looks like you are actually priced below main. So we can go through a list of possible scenarios. Yeah, so hold on. Uh, before we go even further, just want to make sure if you think and you see a price has been priced below your main, just contact us, let us know. Contact the support and provide us the affected asking and also a light price. So we can check in for you. For you. Yes, that, that would obviously be the, the best. Like contact us so we can check your personal scenario. So for now, we can just give a, a list of uh, possible cases, but it's always better for you to just contact us. So and also, yes. yeah, yeah, one more thing I want to <laughs> weigh on this, uh, just to make sure that the main price uh, the Bicu, uh, on the Bicu end is the main price that you created on the Bicu end only. Bicu doesn't consider or take other mean price from other platforms like Inventory Lab or Seller Central. The mean price that we're talking about here is created on the Bicu end only. Yes, uh, the, the mean price in Seller Central in this case doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, Bicu is working with its own mean price that you set. That's true. Yes, so um, another thing you, you probably need to check is uh, that the repricing is enabled for those listings that, that you notice because if the repricing is paused, of course, the data is not updated anymore. Maybe it hasn't been updated for a while. So, of course, the number you're seeing are not correct anymore because the repricing is not enabled. So remember, this only applies to listings that are actually repricing enabled. So when they are repricing enabled, the managed listing can still show some kind of uh, not updated data. If, for example, you have changed uh, very recently your mint price to something uh, new that is above your current live price. Or on the other hand, it could be that you have set a new uh, live price manually on Seller Central. Yes, so, so what, what happened? So essentially for both cases, the system needs to take a short interval to reflect the price change. And the system needs to receive a new report from Amazon first in order to update the numbers on the managing listing page. Uh, you can check the Amazon product page to see if it's already updated on that end. Yeah, so uh, during that the brief time, uh, that, that brief period of time, it might be uh, managed listing might be showing data that are not correct anymore. So uh, check the Amazon product page just in case to mm. see what is your current uh, price. Um, there are two reasons actually for your price to 
really go below your mean. One of them, it could be that you're using another service that is sending new prices as well. Uh, it could be obviously another repricer, uh, but it could also be uh, another type of software like uh, an inventory management software that have some kind of price functionality. So if they're sending a new price as well, uh, that new price might be below the main price that we have in Bicool. So that means that Bicool is going to say, hey, wait a moment, this is not above the main and it's going to decide that you need to have a new price. So there's going to be this price conflict. Of course, it's not good. So just make sure that you don't have another service that is sending prices. Another reason could be that you have duplicate listings. Uh, what are duplicate listings? Jimmy? So for the duplicate listing, that means you have multiple listings on the Bicool end with the same asset and also same fulfillment type and condition. For those listings, because we'll only use the lowest mean price among those listings and use uh, and reprice those listings based on the lowest mean price. That means when we push your listing to the mean, when we push the price to the mean, for some listing to be below its own mean price. Yes, because basically the system is treating everything as just one listing. So I also think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that duplicate listings are forbidden by Amazon, right? It's directly against Amazon policy because Amazon wants to have a level play field for each seller. Yes, so just uh, get rid of the duplicate listings and you won't have this problem anymore, right? That's true, yeah. All right, so let's go to the next question. It will be the last one for today. So the question is from Chris. And it's also about repricing central. Chris is asking, some of my listings are not being repriced, even if there are other sellers within my min and max prices. Why is that happening? I want all my listings to reprice. Yes, Chris, of course, we want most of our listing uh, to reprice. But remember that the system, the repricer is behaving based, based on uh, the condition that you have set in, in, your, in your account. Uh, so if some listings are not being repriced, it, there could be a few reasons. So Jimmy, let's just try to get uh, into this. Like which reason could be? <laughs> and the very first one, I couldn't uh, stress this enough to make sure that your listing is not repricing post. Just because your listing is active, that doesn't mean the listing is repricing enabled. Only if your listing is repricing enabled and active, the listing, uh, the system is able to request price change report from Amazon and we are able to reprice your listing. Yeah, of course, if you don't enable the repricing, there won't be any repricing. Uh, another reason could be that uh, the repricing is enabled, but there is no price change from the competition. That, because the repricing works in this way where we receive a report every time someone changes their price or the, if there is a change in rank. So if there is no report, there is no repricing. Uh, if there is no repricing for uh, eight hours, uh, our system will trigger a new report and is going to check if there is the need for repricing or not. Uh, so this could be another reason, just no one's changing their price. If we do receive the report, we might still not reprice you. Why? Because you have excluded the competition. What does that mean, Jimmy? So basically, the system will, uh, once we receive a new report, the system will follow your repricing rule. So that's say for certain scenario, the system just choose, maybe there's no reason for the system to reprice. The first one could be, oh, uh, your competitor is already price below your main and the system can never follow below your main so the system will choose to do not reprice. Another scenario will be you're competing with the buy box winner and there's only can be one buy box winner and it happens that we exclude a certain fulfillment type meaning if the buy box winner is FBM and I'm doing FBM I don't need to compete with FBM so I excluded FBM from a system perspective, the buy box winner has been excluded. The system cannot compete with the buy box winner. The system will default to do not reprice. Uh, another one is when we uh, exclude back order sellers or seller with very low feedback rate. For that kind of scenario, when you still are competing with the buy box price and literally the buy box winner has been excluded due to your rule setting, the system will still default to do not reprice. Last one, the best one. For some scenario, Amazon just choose not to give anyone the buy box status. That's what we call the buy box suppressed. So for that scenario, a uh, lot of users didn't uh, notice that actually the default setting is do not reprice. So for that scenario happens, the system will just follow the do not reprice instruction. So if you see what this type of scenario happen for your listing, just check your rule. Probably some of the response that you set for that certain scenario is do not reprise. 
Yeah, so there is a way to reprise in these cases. It's just that for now, they might uh, these settings might be set to do not reprise. So mm. uh, just uh, change it. And if you don't know exactly how to change it, of course, just ask the support. Yeah, if you just couldn't wrap your head around about what's happening with the listing, let us know. We'll look into it for you. Yes, there is also one way to trigger more repricing. Since you just mentioned that uh, the buy box can only be one at a time, mm. then of course, uh, if you want to target more sellers at a time, you can change to a rule that is competing with the lowest price. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. means that there will always be at least one seller. Let's say the system is going to check all the sellers and see which one is not excluded. So somehow you're targeting more sellers and you might have more repricing activity right so that's what we say uh, competing with the lowest price can actually generate more repricing activity meaning there's always a lowest price seller but there's only can be one buy box winner if you always target the lowest price offer the system can actively always find the next lowest seller to compete with yes exactly so Another reason it could be that you have a schedule, uh, the schedule pausing, right? Mm. You're pausing uh, the repricing for a brief amount of time and then you're coming back to reprice, but then there is no price change. Like we said before, if there is no price change, then you're staying at a higher price that you chose and you're going to stay there until there is new, new, a new price change. If there is no new price change for six hours, our system will trigger a new report. And again, like we said before, the system will check and eventually it might reprice you. Um, any other? Yeah, and one other thing I want to mention over here is called the price change safety net. Essentially, it's like a breaks for the repricer uh, to prevent a uh, one-time price drop. If your price drop is way too significant, uh, there's a certain limit that the system will reprice you. But uh, probably you just need to check in that setting because that setting sometimes will prevent the system from repricing. Yes, absolutely. You're right. Uh, so these are all settings that they might make you not reprise. So mm -hmm. just check them. Of course, you can change the settings or you can just ask our support. So since this concludes everything, I want to ask you again, Jimmy, if someone wants to contact you after everything we said, what do they do? Actually, this is very important. The most effective way to uh, contact and also communicate with uh, Bitcoin support is contact us. Let us know what's happening and also give us the asset. With the asset, we are able to check the listing. Even better will be the skew. So give us the asset, give us a skew, and we will check the rule for you. And also, I couldn't stress this enough. Give us your repricing expectation, how you want the system works. So with your asset, with your expectation, we're able to configure the rule for you. Yeah, you're right. So we, we always can give you some kind of strategy. All right. So this concludes this episode. If you liked it, uh, please just uh, like the video. You can put any comment below. And uh, also you, you can subscribe to our channel uh, because we have more content coming in, some tips for sellers. Uh, so you can just uh, click here and right, subscribe right. to our channel and then uh, just ask some questions. Uh, this is all for today. Thank you, Jimmy, really for helping me you today. Absolutely welcome as always. All right. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye bye. Okay, where's the... Where's the... Okay, <laughs> 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 ready? Where we answer some of the questions that you... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know why my face is very red.